Hey guys, good morning. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It's 4 a.m. bright and early here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, yesterday I talked about Marjorie Taylor Greene and this America First Caucus. And I, I was telling you guys how I think we, you know, all, the, all of us that aren't Trump supporting Republican conservatives, we basically had this, we, we knew that Trump is really a, 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 par, a symptom He's not the actual problem, part of the problem, but he's the actual symptom of the problem. This, 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 uh, phobia ever since Barack Obama was president that, uh, a lot of older Caucasian Americans have that they're going to be outnumbered. And I've talked about this in other videos. I, I've heard this from people around me that, that the color of America is changing. And this is stuff that a lot of a lot of people in little towns like this, uh, Caucasian people won't dare say in front of anybody else but other Caucasian people. But they do say it. Believe me. And um, and this there's this group of right wing these these young politicians, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Josh Taylor. Uh, Matt Gates, um, uh, Louis Ho Gobart, I think I get that name wrong. Hobart, Gobart, are are just uh, have picked up the ball and kind of even ran with it where Trump left off with, with these nativist, nativist, uh, nationalistic garbage. Um, okay, so yesterday. There was a lot of pushback already. The first one day out, and Marjorie Taylor Greene got a lot of pushback on this America First. And there's some other names that I can't even say on here that people came up with for this America First caucus that I, I can't even say on here. So there was a lot of immediate pushback. This is one of those stories that, as soon as I saw it, it bothered me. To me, it's it's un American. This this just to me it just rings of of 19, late 1930s, early 40s Germany. You know, with this this architecture befitting of uh, European progeny, you know, and, and this I I read I didn't even know what that had to do with. It. Apparently, it has something to do with Trump and his uh, the the way federal buildings look. I, I still don't even understand what what he's getting at. Anyway. There was a lot of pushback yesterday. So Marjorie Taylor Greene goes all over Twitter. I'll, I'll put the links to everything I'm talking about down below. Make sure you look there. There was three or four rage tweets. She's almost getting as good at rage tweeting as Trump was. Not as good, but close to it. So she just went off on woke, woke society, woke socialists and radical socialists and cancel culture, all trying to squish her American Caucasian caucus. Um, no, no, like I said, this is one of those stories, as soon as I saw it, it bothered me, and I wanted to talk about it, and I've told you guys this before, you know, when this happens, and then all of a sudden, you know, a story hits me and bothers me, and I talk about it on here, and then a day or two later, I see it blow up, and that's when I know I hit the story, this is when I, I, I feel like I'm succeeding, like I picked a story that, that bothered, that, that affects us all. You know that uh, that that people want to talk about that that gets them fired up, and this is one of those stories. So there's a lot of pushback, and this is just the fact that the majority of Americans just think this is un-American. It's wrong. It just it it, it it doesn't sit well. This this nativist nationalistic crap. Um. And of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene labels this as, you know, the, she's being cancel cultured and all this other stuff. And like I said, this is, it's not just her. Tucker Carlson's been beating on this for a while now with this great replacement theory. Now, his, 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 he's come right out and said that he, he has this, this feeling that his vote is being watered down. His political power is being taken away. <laughs> now, I've had a problem with this. I'm going to talk, this is what I'm going to talk about because this has bothered me right from the beginning. The whole premise of his idea, I, I find appalling and racist. I don't know how, what else to call it. Prejudice, discriminatory, um, bigotry. Okay, so his premise is, let's, let's just cut it down to the bare bones here. Tucker Carlson is upset because of Joe Biden's allowing all these, a, a lot of these refugee, the children, and and 
people from South America, Central America, Mexico to come into the United States now. And he feels that it's watering down his vote. So what he's saying is, you know, that he is a far right Republican voter. But what he's assuming here, what he's assuming, assuming here, is that all these people, because he thinks they're brown, uneducated, and poor, that they're all going to, you know, he's basically saying that they're all going to vote Democrat. And it's going to take away his power. And he doesn't like it. Okay. So why does he assume, so he's painting this big broad brush stroke that, the, all these people are the vast majority of the, the influx of these, these immigrants and refugees are going to vote Democrat. Um, let's look at Mexico first. It, it's like me say, just take a second. It's like me saying, okay, anybody coming here, any uh, wealthy person coming here from Scandinavian countries are going to vote Republican. They're all going to vote Republican. Too many, too many people, too many wealthy Scandinavians are moving here. And we have to stop it because it's watering down my vote. So I'm painting this whole group, this whole vast, this group of countries as Republican. That they're all going to vote Republican just because of their color, their income, or whatever. And that's what he's doing here. Okay, let's look at Mexico, for instance. I looked it up today. Mexico is over 80% Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. Now, I was raised Roman Catholic, so I'm, I'm kind of familiar uh, there's a very big issue between Roman Catholics and, De and the Democratic Party. It begins with a big A. It has something to do with Roe versus Wade. That subject there. 80% of Mexicans are Roman Catholic. So that right there is, is a big indicator. That <laughs> there's, a, there's a very good chance that the vast majority of this, the, these, the people coming over the southern border are not, a good chance that they're not going to vote Democrat, that they don't agree with a lot of the Democrat policies. Look at, let's look at South America and Central America. Now, there, a lot of the people coming over the border are from South America and Central America. Now, a lot of those countries are, have, are, have their, their toes dipped in socialism. Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela. Okay, so if... If they were happy with the way these countries are going socialist or maybe leaning co towards communism, they would stay down. They would stay there. But the, the fact that they're leaving these countries and coming this way is a good indicator that perhaps they, they, they are not all for socialism. Take, for instance, uh, I, I've, known, I've known a lot of Cuban, Cuban Americans, and a vast number of them came here because they didn't agree with communism. They, they are, they're very, almost all of them were Republican voters. And I could see that same thing happening with a lot of the influx of people coming from South and Central America. So right there, Tucker Carlson is assuming that, that for some, well, oh, let's not forget this though. What Tucker Carlson is really getting at is what he thinks is they're all coming over the border for free handouts. They all just want to sit around and not work. And, you know, I could sit here and, uh, describe other uh, disgusting things that I'm sure that go, goes through Tucker Carlson's mind. But a lot of these, these people are coming here to work for the, for the American dream, to work hard and succeed. And you see that in their work ethic. You see that the crime rate uh, amongst immigrants is way lower than yeah, Americans. I'll put the links down below. The uh, college education is, is on the upswing for a Hispanic going to college and Hispanic. They are the lowest of four groups, granted, but it's on the upswing as far as education goes. One of the good things is that uh, Hispanics have some of the lowest um, college debt, debt going into carrying college debt because a, a lot of Hispanics tend to go to community college. So there's a lot of things here that Tucker Carlson isn't even taking into account. He's just painting this whole, he's just assuming. Like I said, it's, his whole premise is, is false and based on bigotry. That all these people are going to come here and they're going to all be beholden 
to, to vote for, for Democrats or for Joe Biden because they're going to owe him for free handouts or for their, their freedom in coming into America. And that is just bull. That is just racist bull. Like I said, it's like saying, me saying that everybody that comes from Norway is going to vote Republican or everybody from Russia is going to vote whatever. People are all different. And he's, he's, like I said, in Mexico, as far as one, one of the biggest factors is religion. Um, most Americans are very religious, and 80% of them are Roman Catholic, which would put them at odds with the Democrat Party, right there. Right there are just some reasons why this pokes huge holes in Tucker Carlson's whole premise that the influx of refugees and immigrants are, are going to somehow dilute his Republican, his Caucasian Republican vote. I'm going to talk more about this. Uh, you guys have a great Sunday. I'll be back later with another video.